Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this video by Aristotle Investments. Got black men preaching, don't leave behind to your kids because it's blah, blah, blah. Man, that. Get some money, leave behind. Black kids deserve to grow rich too. I don't give a how spoiled they are. White kids spoiled, Indian kids spoiled. Everybody spoiled except us. So yes, my kids will grow up rich. It's my job as a parent to pass down businesses, generational wealth to my kids. Even joining the army is some form of generational wealth because if you stay in for a long time, you could pass down college right to your kids. Life insurance is a form of generational wealth. The stock market is a form of generational wealth. Owning a business, if you have a restaurant, you can pass that down to your kids. So what happens is these mother make money in an unorthodox way, like rapping, playing ball, and they have no advice to give to their kids. So they themselves say they did the worst thing. Cause if you're a rapper or a ball player, you don't know about finance other than endorsement deals. They don't know about building a company because somebody built that company and signed their asses. Alex, I know you, I mean, you went to private school. I mean, so we'll start, we'll start it off there. And, and while you was at that school, I know you was around a lot of influent families, you know, kids and stuff like that. Their parents was affluent, not them. And you see, you see, I mean, well, that, that's the, that's the notion out there. You know, you have old money and new money. You see kids driving around in Lamborghinis and Ferraris and stuff like that. And it's their parents' money. And in the mass social construct of the United States, when they see that, knowing the kid didn't work for it to make the money themselves, it's frowned upon. I mean, you might even hear parents saying, oh, my biggest thing is I made money and I spoiled my kid. So just give me what it was, life was like growing up seeing that aspect of life. It was kind of weird because at my school, me and maybe two other people um, grew up around the same area, which to the students at that school was considered like poor and like humiliating in a sense. I didn't really care. I mean, it wasn't like it bothered me. I was fine with how we lived. But seeing kids be so almost brainwashed to how the world actually works and how financial struggle is real to most people was was kind of weird because they're so out of touch with reality um there were kids that you know their parents were making well over millions of dollars a year and could afford to give huge donations to the school so the school took care of them and gave them you know special treatment and all that so it was it was a bit different um but i noticed that they didn't have like any drive themselves to do anything bigger they just kind of assumed and i heard it from their words and they would they would always state like oh i'm just going to take over my parents business and so they really thought that but they at the same time they didn't even know how to operate their parents business they their parents knew you know, all the problems involved with the business and how to navigate those issues. And I even was close friends with a kid at at the school that his parents owned a big gym and they were well into like selling gym equipment to like different companies and stuff. And um, like even he didn't know how to operate the business in that sense. And he didn't even know the struggles that his parents went through. And his parents would tell my mom and my mom would tell me. But, you know, the kids were out of touch with reality completely. Right. And when, they, when they're out of touch, everybody believes, and, I, and I'm speaking a lot for the black community, and because I, I hear this a lot, when I, or the minority community, is I had to struggle. My kids need to learn to struggle also. Uh, I see... I see no generational wealth being built, set up. I mean, in the minority community, passing on generational wealth is making sure you got a life insurance policy to bury you. That's that's as far as it go. Or they'll go buy a ho house that they live in and say, oh, when I die, then I'm going to pass it to my kids to create a bigger problem. So if you just think of that for a second, everybody who say, oh, I'm going to buy a house for I'm going to buy a house to live in and pass it down to my kids. Just think about it. You're going to buy a house that you're not going to pay off. 
your kids are going to be in their adult lives and then they're going to be doing whatever they're doing then you pass and then now if you got more than one kid now they're fighting over what to do with the property they still have to pay the mortgage for the property they're barely going to have their head above water now you just gave them another debt obligation to go over and then none of them are going to agree let's say you got two three four five kids none of them are going to agree on what to do with the property and then they're going to fight 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 dave ramsey said best if you don't like your kids, pass down a house to them. And you'll see them arguing for the rest of your life. Rest of their life, not your life. You've already been passed. And that's that's something that I always see. I mean, in the black community, I always see, like I said, life insurance policies. Life insurance policies, probably like $10,000. Just enough to bury them. You know, forget them. Forget after the afterlife or whatever, or what these people got to go through. But that's all it is. I mean, I even got family members when I'd be like, hey, so why don't you do this for your kids? Well, I had to, I had to go through this, so they should go through it too. I 100% don't prescribe to that mentality. And I agree 100% with uh, Aristotle there where they say you set it up and it's for your kids' kids. I do set it up. I, I do set up the businesses. I do set up the real estate. I do set up the stock market so my kids can benefit up from it. It's not for me. I mean, Alex, you know me. Shorts, T-shirt, you know, uh, all the name brand stuff I have is from when I was broke trying to look like I had money. Now that I got money, I ain't trying to spend nothing on myself besides uh, food and booze. <laughs> but, but besides that, it's that's what it's for. Now, in your scenario right there, when you're saying the, the kids don't understand how to run a business and things like that, I put contingencies in place so my kids couldn't destroy their own future. I protected them for themselves, from themselves. I set up the businesses. I set up the real estate so my kids won't have to do it. But they will still benefit from the cash flow that's there. But they will not be able to diminish the returns from other generations after. So I agree 100% if... And I'm not making this a white-black issue, but I'm going off what the video said. If the white kids can do it, and nepotism is prevalent there and they're flourishing with it, why the hell we can't do it in the minority community? The reason why we can't do it because everybody is selfish. Now, I'm not saying people in other cultures are not selfish, but you see it in the Asian community. You see it in the Hispanic community. You see, I mean, you see it in a lot of communities where they thinking of generations ahead. They're playing the long game. In the minority community, they only play in the short game. They only care about themselves. They only care about the time that they, they light switches on from the time they wake up to the time they die. That's all that matters. So, I mean, I, I agree a lot with a lot of things you said in this video. Okay. So Kirby, I have a question for you. So mm -hmm. obviously I know, well, I know your family somewhat. I know your mm -hmm. kid is living the life, but do you believe that, um, the word spoiling, like the, I, I think of it maybe different. Do you think it's right for a parent to spoil? Because even though I know, I know you like to go have fun with your family and do things, but I don't think you spoil your kid, if that makes sense. Like maybe people watching don't know what I'm talking about, but Kirby's not out there buying his kid just whatever he says he wants he'll actually like i mean it's, a, it's your son's so young but he'll like make him think like like i remember the time you said that he wanted to buy something on a game and you're like all right so how are you going to come up with the money <laughs> like so you got him thinking you know like yeah. even though you know regardless of how much money you make you know even if you're making millions do you think that spoiling your kid is the like actual spoiling your kids where they're so pampered and they have nothing to worry about. Do you think that is the right way to do it? I, I have no problem with somebody spoiling a kid. Let's put that out there first. I have no problem with somebody spoiling a kid, but that's after you took care of their financial future. The problem is most people want to spoil their kid with the last, I mean, with their paycheck. And then next thing you know, they have no more money after it. I mean, for the life of me, 
if I hear one more time somebody saying, oh, yeah, I had to spend my whole paycheck on his birthday party. That's that's retarded. All right, my son, I think my son is spoiled in this aspect. My son's hardest day has probably been he couldn't go to McDonald's. I mean, I'm just I'm just gonna be honest. I mean, and we're foodies, so we we eat a lot everywhere. But I don't my son just don't wake up and say, Hey, I want a Lamborghini and I'm gonna buy it. My son don't wake up and say, Hey, I want the PS sixteen and I'm gonna buy it. That's that's just not happening. I mean, when it comes to the things that we do, you know, if he wanna do sports or stuff like that then I'm all for it. Go ahead. Do your thing. Um, but it's not a, it's not a, it's, but the reason why I can do it is because I took care of his, took care of his financial future first. I mean, my son, he's only 10, but his college is already paid for all the way up into a master's degree. Securing the financial future. Like uh, Aristotle said in the video, going to the military and people don't do this. Cause I said short term mind frame in the military you can get your degree for free while you're in the military. And then while you're in the military, they have this thing called the post 9-11 GI Bill, where if you get your degree or if you don't get your degree, it's up to you. You can pass the post 9-11 GI Bill off to your kids. You can pass it off to the kids. It'll pay for their degree and it will give them a monthly stipend for housing and food and stuff. That's a generational change right there for them. Especially for the people that don't go. But most people in the military, this is what they do. They don't do nothing while they're in the military. They don't get a degree or anything. And then they get out of the military. And then they use the post-9-11 GI Bill to live off of. That's what they do. So it's, it's a dynamic that people don't understand. That it's different ways that you can support your kid's future. But the key is support their future first. Take care of the future and then come back and deal with the present. Because the future is going to happen with or without you. So make sure the future is done because the present really is not that damn big of a deal. But my son, I, I think he's spoiled, uh, but it's nothing that's just absolutely given to him. I, I make him work for it. I make him think for it. I make him come up with ideas and concepts like all the money that my son has ever received from gifts and stuff from grandparents, parents, friends. I don't let him go out there to the candy store or go out to the stores and spend the money. Every dollar is Put up so he know he already have a propensity understanding that hey we have to save first and then think of ways to have uh think of avenues of how to make this money make more money before i go out and indulge on the things that i do but that's the you know concept and mindset that we start building into him young because we don't want to get him to thinking oh i could just swipe a car swipe a car swipe a car get what i want and don't worry about it daddy will take care of it that's all right mommy will take care of it but for the most part, if it's within reason, my son gets it. But only because his financial future is taken care of already. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. With that being said, guys, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one.